All right, hello people watching this video. This is seven, two. We are adding and subtracting. We are only getting through like the first example today um, because we are just worrying about least common multiples, okay? And finding common denominators. We're not going to actually be doing the adding and subtracting until tomorrow. I will be gone tomorrow because I have a doctor's appointment. So you guys will have a video to watch on Google Classroom and Megan has your notes and your homework for this section. So she's gonna give it to you um, so that you can watch that video tomorrow. You may need to watch this one first or if you haven't already, whatever. Anyway, so uh, that's how, what's gonna happen tomorrow, okay? I don't know where you will be. Seven, two, adding and subtracting. We are finding a least hey. common multiple. No, go back. Nope, 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 we don't care. Yep, go. I don't have time. Write this at the top of the paper. We're going to talk about the least common multiple. It's example right here. We're going to talk about the least common multiple for this problem. So write him at the top of the paper. I'm going to zoom him up a little bit. Okay, least common multiple. Least common multiple is the smallest number that everything goes into. When we're adding and subtracting, we talked yesterday about having to find a common denominator. So here's the deal. I know that six times nine is 54, and I can certainly use 54 as a common denominator. Don't write that down. I can certainly use 54 as a common denominator, but that is not the smallest number that both nine and six go into. I want, when I'm doing a least common multiple, I want the smallest number that six and nine will go into. So I'm not gonna use 54. What number are you gonna use? Six and nine. No, no, Big, smaller. What number can six and nine both go 18, into? 18. 18, right? 54 was a way big number. 18 is even better. That is the least or the smallest number that both of them will go into. Now, when I go to start adding, which is not what we're gonna do today, but we look at this and we say, what do you take times six to get 18? Three. Three, so I'm gonna take it times three and the top number is going to be? 15, right? Because five times three, okay? What do you take times nine to get 18? Two, two. two. so four times two, this is gonna give me eight and when I add them, 18 is the bottom number, right? You don't add the bottom numbers together. The top number is 23. 23, and we're gonna leave it like that. We're big kids, so we leave it as an improper fraction. Today, all we're gonna be focused on is finding that least common multiple, right? Least common multiple, but we are doing stuff like A, this guy, okay? <clears throat> Where we have X's and Y's, okay? X's and Y's, we've gotta find the least common multiple. So here we go, least common multiple. This is saying that if I had 6xy as my denominator, so I had like something over 6xy and something over 15x squared and something over 9xy to the fourth, and I'm adding them all together, what would my common denominator be? That's what we're trying to find, okay? We're not going to actually add them. We're going to just find what the smallest number is, okay? So here's the deal. When we do this, this 6 and this 15 and this 9, this is where I start. Start with the number, okay? I start with the biggest number, okay? The biggest number is 15. Does six and nine go into 15? No. No, so I'm gonna cross off 15 and the next number that's divisible by 15 would be 30, no. right? Does six go into 30? Yes. Yes, but does nine? No. no. No, so then I've gotta go up to 45. Does six go into 45? Yes. Nine. Really? It's gotta be nine. Nine does, but six does not, right? Okay, so let's go up to 60. Okay, we're doing intervals of 15. Does six go into 60? Yes. Yes, but does nine? No. No, so we gotta bump up to yeah. 75. Does six go into 75? No. No. Then we bump up to 90. Does six go yes. into 90? Yes. Yes, does nine go into 90? Yes. And obviously 15 goes into 90. So that is going to be the number that I am going to use. Does that make sense? 90 is the number. Okay, now here's the deal. We are gonna move on to the x's. So I have x here, I have x squared here, and I have x here. And if we multiply those all together, we would get x to the fourth power. But kind of like with the six and the nine up here, you don't have to multiply them together to get like the least common multiple, right? There is something smaller than x to the fourth that all of them will go into, right? If I just do x squared, does x go into x squared? Sure, does x squared go into x squared? Yeah. Yes, does this x go into x squared? Yep. Sure does, right? So what's the rule when you're doing those? Find the, biggest one. Find the biggest one, okay? So now when we go to the y's, we've got y here. I don't have a y here, so we don't have to worry about him. And we have y to the fourth. How many y's would you need? 
four. Does y go into y to the fourth? Does y to the fourth go into y to the fourth? Yes, okay. So now if I look at the big picture, final wrap up, does six xy go into that? Yes, like six goes into 90, x goes into there, y goes into there. Does 15x squared go into that? Yes. Does 9xy to the fourth go into that? So this is my least common multiple, right? This would be my common denominator if I had all those. Got it? Okay, now we move on to, so these guys right here, in part A, were they trapped or not trapped? Were those things that were trapped or not trapped? Like the x's and y's? Those were like my not trapped ones, right? Like x and y are not added together or anything like that. We're gonna move on to some trapped things, okay? And we have this chunk right here and we have this chunk right here, got it? Let's start with, these are trapped, right? So if you need to write that down, if that helps you, he is trapped, okay? x squared minus three x minus 40. I'm gonna start with the right side one because he is like easier. When we're dealing with trapped stuff, we usually break them down first, okay? So let's tr start with that strategy, kind of like what we did in 7-1. He is a simple trinomial. What can you multiply to get negative 40, but when you add them, give you negative 3? 8 and 5, which one's negative? Negative 8. Negative 8, positive 5, right? That will give me negative 3. Okay, he's broken down. He's just going to sit and chill for a minute, okay? We bump over here, and this is not a simple trinomial. It's three pieces, but look at each one of those three pieces. What is in common? X squared, x squared. Can you take a GCF of an x squared out in front? So this is like the GCF part, right? Okay, if I take an x squared out, we have x squared plus 8x plus 15, but we're not done yet because now we have a simple trinomial. So this x squared is just going to chill, okay? So we have a GCF and a simple trinomial going on here before we break down. What can you multiply to get 15 but add to get 8? Five minus eight plus 5 and plus 3. All right, good. So I have my two chunks that are completely broken down, and here's the deal. Least common multiple. Yesterday you got into the habit of crossing things off, like x plus 5 and x plus 5. We're not reducing. So we're not gonna cross anything off, but what we need to do is we need to say, I want to find my least common multiple so that this goes into it and this also goes into it, right? Like I wanna find what those will go into. So here's the process, ready? It's as easy as this. I know that my least common multiple has to have an x squared in it, otherwise this won't go in there, right? He has to have an x squared. Then I go to the next piece. I know that my least common multiple has to have x plus five. Agreed? Otherwise that won't fit in there. I also know he has to have an x plus three, otherwise that won't go in there, okay? Then I move on to my next one and I say, okay, he also has to have an x minus five, or excuse me, an x minus eight, otherwise that won't go in there. And he needs an x plus five, but he already has one, right? So because there's an x plus five here and an x plus five here, I don't have to repeat him twice. If I look at this, which is four pieces, will both of those fit inside of there? Are both of those parts included in there? Yeah. Are all three of these parts included in there? So this is my least common multiple, right? It's the least because we don't have two x plus fives. Does that make sense? We only need one of them. Got it? That's how you do the trapped ones. Okay, I'm gonna do one more example. Put it off to the side over here because I'm gonna show you the exception, kind of. Okay, here's the two things I want you to break down, x squared, plus 2x plus 1, and let's say x squared plus, let's go 4x plus 3. <coughs> We're going to break those down. This is the exception to the rule, kind of. It's not really even an exception. It's just the way it works. Okay? Let's say we have those two and we're trying to find our least common multiple. Got it? Least common multiple. Let's break this one down. What can you multiply to get 1 but add to get 2? 1 and 1. x plus 1 and x plus 1. Got it? Okay, we're gonna have some weird things happen. What can you multiply to get three but add to get four? Three and one. Okay, three and one, so x plus three and x plus one, okay? So when I'm going through my least common multiple, some people think I can do x plus three and x plus one, right? Because there's x plus ones and x plus three, so I just need one of each of them right. Does this guy fit into there? 
Yeah. Yes. You're missing one of Does them? this one fit into there? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. You're missing one of the x plus one. I need another x plus one in order for this thing to fit into mm -hmm. there, right? Does that make sense? So the exception to the rule is that I will need a second x plus one if they're in the same group, right? Because otherwise he won't fit into there, right? So now if I add an additional x plus one, will now he fit into there? Yeah. Yes. Now he will fit in there. So my least common multiple has to have two x plus ones in it because the one side had two x plus ones. That's the only exception, right? So normally